Every few years, I make the mistake of wanting to do some spring cleaning and sell some secondhand goods. And what's a better place to sell secondhand goods than Facebook Marketplace? With eBay, you have to deal with shipping, and with Craigslist, you have to deal with not getting kidnapped, so Facebook Marketplace it is. But the last time I did that, I... From old lady scammers, to obsessive weirdos that made me feel unsafe, to people just straight up making fun of me. The amount of times people ask me to call all them on Facebook Marketplace is an introvert's worst nightmare. Do you want the ring light or not? It's 10 bucks. You don't need to call me. Why do you need to call me? Ran into old lady scammers and people would not stop wanting to call me to this day I don't know why people want to talk on the phone so bad on Facebook marketplace Like what is that conversation going to be like? Hi. Hi. Do you want the thing? Yes. Okay. Does it work? Yes. Can I come now? Yes. Okay. Okay This could have been a three text conversation Yes there's one interaction I'm still mad about where I was selling this big piece of wooden furniture for $60 and the lady couldn't find my apartment building in the apartment complex even though I gave her clear instructions and then got mad and tried to give me $20 for the thing because she couldn't find my apartment. But at that point, I had already brought it down to the first floor. Like I was outside with it for her. So I ended up giving it to her for $40 because she kept bullying me in real life. I'll never forgive you, Dolores. You caused much dolor in my ass. So Facebook Marketplace itself is its own rabbit hole of a video that you can watch after this if you want. But I'm here to talk about the rest of Facebook. Why? Well, my original intention was to sell stuff on Marketplace, but where I ended up was somewhere else. I logged in and started scrolling and saw some of the most absurd shit that you will never get served on Instagram or TikTok or Twitter X. On those websites, you get a curated feed that the algorithm feeds you to eat up, yum yum yum. Tasty little treats that the algorithm knows that you like seeing. Or ones that will get your engagement because a lot of the ones on Twitter just like piss you off. It learns what you think is funny, cute, yummy, and you get more and more of what you interact with. On Facebook, since I made one and never touched it, Facebook has no idea who I am. So the default feed that they show you is a mess. Cat Williams leaks video of Tyler Perry's freak off with Kevin Hart. Video is below. Hello. This was posted by King of Cinema, where they just post tabloid-esque news. They can put any pictures up and do whatever, and people believe everything on here. Wow. Question what's going to happen to Kevin or anyone else. I'll wait. Damn right, Teresa. Good to see some level-headed individuals on here. I'm afraid to click on this link like I'm guaranteed to get a virus. There are plenty of tabloid-type pages that thrive on Facebook these days. The last time most of us left Facebook, our impression of it was like mothers who post questionably aggressive minion memes with the guise of being playful. But in reality, they're on the edge. They need to whine and whine, if you know what I mean. Like the personification of... I love cooking with wine. Sometimes I even put it in the food. If I manage to survive the rest of the week, I would like my straight jacket to be hot pink and my helmet to sparkle. If stress burned calories, I'd be a supermodel. Vai pela sombra, merda no sol seca. What does that mean? Dear haters, I couldn't help but notice that awesome ends with me and ugly starts with you. Putting down your phone and paying attention to those talking to you, there's an app for that. It's called Respect. My kids don't talk to me anymore. But now Facebook is still that, but more. We got Ariana Grande and her ex-husband, hashtag boom challenge. Upon clicking the hashtag, we can decipher exactly what hashtag boom challenge is. So, so far we have Ariana Grande and her ex-husband. We have uh, Sylvester Stallone and his daughter from the page called Teaching English. Where'd she go? <laughs> Don't scare me like that, Sylvester. And under it, we have this video from the page Fast Videos. Hashtag boom challenge. Why is he putting boots in the... Okay, we're... Trust the process, trust the process. Okay, we're wrapping it with string. Okay, I wonder what he's making. What is he making? I mean, this is pretty sick, but like, what is he doing?
I guess we'll never find out. The video just ends? First of all, fast videos feels like false advertising because that felt like an eternity. And then I got punished for watching it all. I want my 60 seconds back. I still don't know what he was doing. Part three, hashtag movie, hashtag boom challenge. This is just a scene from the hit movie. The Suicide Squad. Is this person just uploading the entire movie to Facebook in 4x5 cropped aspect ratio with black bars on the top and bottom in parts? This is like some 2005 YouTube stuff. Safe to say, I know exactly what the hashtag boom challenge is now. The rest of my feed was just a lot of Beyonce and her family. Go blue! <laughs> uh... I'm pretty sure she's wearing orange. We have the most hilarious Photoshop of Paul Walker ever. <laughs> R.A.P. But uh, at least we got the Wiz Khalifa song out of it. Damn. So one genre of video that's really popular on Facebook, or at least was, are the ones where someone is supposed to get surprised with something, like a proposal, or a boyfriend back home from military stuff, but the video is padded with like 10 minutes of nothing happening, and it's like the worst staged thing ever. Rolling. Action. Pay no mind to the person yelling rolling. Action. In the beginning of this video, and you'll see why. Ew. Why was that in your mouth? So he's gonna put it in the strawberry. No one will ever see him there with that. So now they're calling the girl over who's gonna get proposed to. Good thing that they yelled rolling action in the beginning of this. Rolling action. Oh my gosh, what is this? Your man, he what? sent this over for you. Oh my God, it's amazing. Yeah. She doesn't know. Gosh, if only he was here. Ugh. Where is he? Can he breathe? Oh. He's in Madagascar. Oh. She doesn't even yeah. see the ring clearly in the strawberry. How does she not see him? This is crazy. I think he's actually here. Yeah. I think here. he's here. I think yeah, he might be here. Know. I think he might be here. Oh my God. <gasps> she found the what? ring. A ring. I told you. This girl has the observational skills of Dora the Explorer. It's like part of the reason I stopped watching the show as an eight-year-old. It was infuriating. Look. Uh, what does that say? Rem real. Remove the rose. Remove the rose there because there is a very special <gasps> surprise. Oh my god! <gasps> You're okay. here? I mean, the acting from the friend there is just top tier. I mean, Navy boyfriend surprises pregnant girlfriend and propose. They're like combining everything in this one. They are expecting a baby. <gasps> it's the guy from the last video. Her boyfriend has been gone for three years. <gasps> now he's taking over the ultrasound and he definitely, it, that's definitely plugged in and real. They about to know the gender of the baby. He's crying of happiness. She definitely cannot see him out of the peripherals of her eyes. I actually have another surprise for you. What? So the what? reason I'm filming is to your left. Oh! <laughs> No way! Oh I know. my god! <laughs> it's, been, it's been so long, it's been so long, and I know I've been overseas, oh and we're having a baby girl, yes. and you know what? I don't wanna, I don't wanna spend another oh day not knowing you know my wife. Oh. Would you marry me? Of course! Really? Yes, of course! Oh, oh my gosh, thank you so much. Oh, we're having a baby girl! Oh no! Oh, oh my god! god. Hold on. He's been gone for three years and she's pregnant. <laughs> that might have been what they were baiting, but it didn't work because the only comment is, congratulations to you and your families. Thank you, Barb. When she sees him, military husband surprise homecoming. This one has 70,000 likes. In this one, he loves doing this thing every like 10 seconds where he shushes us as if we're gonna tell her.
Oh, and now he's doing the thing where he takes over. If someone was just standing there filming me like this for 15 minutes during my appointment, I would be weirded out. I was doing the whole thing. Oh, I was doing it. Get here? I'm so glad I waited 15 minutes to watch the last 20 seconds of this video. Can you imagine if the first like 20 minutes of my videos were just me like setting up and I just left it all in? Hey guys, and welcome to another episode. The reason they do this instead of just posting the last 10 seconds of the video is to increase the watch time, which means more ads, which means more money. They do this on Snapchat too. Uh, this reminds me of that one video I made where they spend 10 minutes burning sprinkles and eggs in a waffle iron only for it to come out looking like this. <laughs> But I want to show you the reason I wanted to make this video. Because I found the most insane conglomeration of celebrity tabloid stretching the video out. The most confusing video I've ever seen. Zac Efron failed in his latest millionaire project. Ah uh, yes, the failed celebrity, Zac Efron. <laughs> they basically made up this entire narrative that Zac Efron is devastated and now his career has plummeted and he's in turmoil. And today with his intervened face, his career is coming to an end. The high school musical actor is devastated. For years he had to deal with horrible rumors about his swollen face due to bad surgery. You had to recently dispel rumors that you had undergone plastic surgery. You actually experienced <laughs> But the truth was different. He was found on the floor of his house after a terrible domestic accident. His jaw was dislocated but the public only cared about how he looked. That's why his new project failed. His new project failed because he was ugly and the public only cared about that. <laughs> As if that wasn't enough, another image of the actor with grotesque muscles went viral. He became the laughing stock again. Everyone hates Zac Efron. <laughs> but after all the hype surrounding his face, he had to speak up. After the traumatic accident, Efron's career declined. But the trip to Australia to film his failed show wasn't in vain because Zach found a love at a cafe. He met a 25-year-old waitress who stole his heart. She was everything he was looking for. She seemed to be the right one for him. She was a normal and down-to-earth woman. But it seems Vanessa had other intentions and would break Efron's heart again. After 10 months, Vanessa betrayed him. She was tempted by the fame and Zack lost control. He kicked her off the set of his series, ending the idyllic romance. Zack discovered that Valadares had other intentions. She was tempted by fame and money and accepted a contract to participate in a controversial reality show. Why are we talking about her now? There are more twists and turns in this video than there are on an average road in Massachusetts. But upon his return, Zack worried his fans again. New images with a bulked physique put him in the spotlight once again. But this time, he went overboard at the gym. In just a few months, he completely transformed and looks like a different person. But this time, it's all due to a new project. Woo! Zach plays the wrestler Kevin Von Erich for the movie The Iron Claw. God, he had me worried there. That was another big twist twist in this video. I got worried. Imagine if someone made this, but it's about your life. Gabby Bell failed in her latest millionaire project. And today, with her intervened face, her career is coming to an end because her fans keep saying she looks like Michael Reeves, another YouTuber on YouTube.com. The young star is devastated 
and shares a birthday with Usher. Reminds me of these videos that are like, Mr. Beast is dying very soon. Mr. Beast has a condition called Crohn's disease. Mr. Beast could die from this. I'm so glad I could finally show someone that video because I reference it at least three times a week. Because there's a response video to that from what might be the same guy. Mr. Beast is not dying. A YouTuber just claimed Mr. Beast will pass away soon because he has Crohn's disease. Mr. Beast is dying very soon. Mr. Beast has a condition called Crohn's disease. Mr. Beast could die from this. Mr. Beast does have this disease, but it's very rarely fatal and he definitely won't pass away from it anytime soon. Lying about Mr. Beast dying for views is honestly disgusting. But before we get into the even wilder stuff I found on Facebook, which is no one's surprise, you might end up wanting to sign up for the sponsor of today's video, Aura. Aura is an online privacy tool with a multitude of resources like password manager, VPN, credit locking, and fraud monitoring. Just the other day, there was a breach that involved my email on a website, and it notified me, and I changed my password immediately. For those of you that use the same password for everything, this is why you shouldn't. Don't do that. Use a password manager genuinely. I was also doing some fun stuff where a company had to soft check my credit report. And even after unlocking it, Aura notified me immediately before it was even approved by the company. It's a pretty cool tool and I've been using it for a few years now. And I've forced my entire family to be on the family plan and it's great. If you're interested, you can get two weeks for free using my link. It's aura.com slash Gabby Bell. Or you can scan the QR code on the screen or the link is in the description below. Thanks to Aura for sponsoring. Checking out the sponsor really helps the channel. And uh, be safe out there because, uh, especially on Facebook, because this is about to to get wild. Now that was just my initial scroll as I was laying on the ground procrastinating my plunge into the toilet of Facebook Marketplace. But upon spending the most time on Facebook that I have since 2016, I thought joining a bunch of mom groups would be hilarious to see whatever shenanigans they were talking about in there. But instead, I logged on later to continue my rediscovery of making Facebook part of my daily routine. And the first thing I was assaulted with was a carousel of the most disgusting disgusting pictures of a child's foot with a giant piece of foot crust in the shape and color of a Pringle peeled off his foot. No sensor warning, no slash spoiler. Even Instagram, also a meta company, has built a feature that it will blur images it thinks are explicit. But this was an uncensored attack on my eyes. I didn't even think to look at the comments because I just immediately left the group. I saw one image and left. So I gave up on that idea and I started scrolling through the popular public group suggestions and found groups like chickens, 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 which contained photos of chickens and eggs. Eight out of 10. I'm high and this is Stardew Valley. Five out of 10 cute posts, but not enough drama. There's also frog posting, a Facebook group where you post frog content. I got what I came for. Nine out of 10. Plunging into the depths of Facebook group hell, I came to this conclusion about young people who still use Facebook. I know everyone was wondering this and I'm here to dispel the rumors and give you the facts. It feels like there are four types of people under 30 who still use Facebook actively. And it's either to cross post your LinkedIn posts, you're using it ironically and are in shit posting groups, you're an edgelord from 2016, or you're in frog spotting. Isn't that just all social media now? Like it's all like that. It hasn't changed. Baddies in relationships. Boyfriend texting married female coworker after working hours. Thoughts? He talks a lot about female coworker. Her name comes up several times per week. They've gone on a work trip together alone. Last weekend, he suddenly wanted to go for a local day trip and the car read aloud a text from her that she was coincidentally at the same location, like they were discussing it over text. He mentioned her several times while we were out. Altogether, it gave me the impression since he talks about her frequently, he thinks of her a lot. Perhaps I think too much into things? Thoughts? And a group expert gives the great advice of go through that phone. Oh my god. Listen, I support women's rights and women's wrongs, but I... This one's a bit far. 10 out of 10, this group brought the drama. Quotes and healing prayers. Your bank account is just about to overflow, but okay. Amen. You people cannot follow directions. And right when I was about to close the book on this saga, you literally cannot be on Facebook for more than a couple hours, if you're lucky, without running into a scam. 
On another post in this group, a reply to Amen was, Send a friend request to Mrs. Angel. She will help you. I am building my own house, and I also have groceries through her company. She is legit and trustworthy. Click on her name. And in the URL, there's Bitcoin, and it's to someone named Angle and not Angel. <laughs> and this is definitely them in the profile picture and not fake at all. Their header kind of tells us everything we need to know about what they do, except is this a thumb? How does that even happen on this type of image? We guarantee you the best trades, strategies in business trade wisely and gain financial freedom. Bitcoin mining, eight years, years of University of San Diego. I majored in Bitcoin mining for eight years, years. Yeah, and uh, I did my master's in hacking class logistics of University of San Diego. This scammer in particular will Photoshop posts like this one, where they're pretending to be a satisfied investment client, where they basically RuneScape scam you by promising to double your Bitcoin or money and then tricking you in some way or just straight up stealing your money. But this person obviously got a new car and store, so we should be happy for them. Like the 99 bot comments congratulating them in the exact same way. I wanted to see if these botted accounts were fake accounts or hacked ones of victims. And and everything just keeps getting weirder. I guess I shouldn't be surprised because it's Facebook, but every bot account I clicked on were from Lubbock, Texas, liked religious posts, and have posted a photo of themselves in the last month, and it's the first thing on their profile. Now, either the city of Lubbock has a really active crypto investment community, or these are hundreds if not thousands of fake profiles with the same parameters. Which is ironic, considering Facebook blocks real accounts and asks for your physical government ID for you to log back in. Yet their detection lets fake accounts flood the site. There was this really popular type of scam comment that I saw that reads very much like a genuine message up until the end. And it's usually like a woman in distress about her husband potentially cheating, and so she hires a hacker to reveal all his emails, Facebook and Instagram chats, real-time call listening, and his long-deleted messages. My god, these hackers have more technology than Nicolas Cage did to steal the Declaration of Independence. But they'll refer the hacker's username at the end to recommend to other vulnerable women in some potentially bad relationships. They must target religious groups in particular because of the trust that's there? Like, oh, this person is clearly an honest Christian, like it's less likely that it will be a scam. Plus, the demographic of people in religious Facebook groups tend to be a bit older and a bit more easily tricked and fooled by this stuff that's pretending to be genuine. And like I said in my last video about Facebook Marketplace, Facebook loves to let these scammers run rampant on their platform without doing anything about it. Last time I reported a scammer and they said, we reviewed your report. We concluded, nah. They basically force the users to self-moderate. I noticed with a ton of the groups I joined, I had to answer manual CAPTCHA questions to make sure I was a real person. Because the one public group I went in with no moderation was terrible. There were the same videos posted over and over that had nothing to do with Star Wars and or Bush posting, promoting 18 plus pages which is not allowed on Facebook, I just looked it up. Facebook is a massive platform that spans across the globe and makes it difficult to perfectly moderate. But some of this stuff is like, dude, what's going on over there at Facebook HQ? Among the groups and scams, this video will now come full circle because the other 80% of Facebook groups that were recommended to me were flooded with Timu and Shein support groups. I joined all the ones I saw. Now what the hell are these? I paused for a moment there and went down the most insane rabbit hole once again. These pages are full of posts from real people from what I've gathered, asking to accept some sort of Timu invite for them to get a free gift. And I kept seeing like farmland or fishland everywhere on it. And what it is, is these people are playing a game in the Timu app. It's a farming sim that allows you to quote unquote earn coupons and free gifts upon playing their game. How could Timu possibly benefit from this? Well, to water the plants and earn money, you need water. And they give you almost enough water to earn all their free gifts before they start making it more difficult. They ask you to invite friends to get more water or just browse the items for 60 seconds to earn more water. And they ask you several times to 
spend $20 on Timu to get more water. Those are like special tasks that earn you more in the game. They ask you to turn notifications on, to remember to come back to claim more water from this loot box, and then invite more friends to get some water from that. It's all purposefully to make shopping on Timu addictive by forming the shopping experience around a game, all while you're recruiting new users for them. Wow. <laughs> Plus these $30, $40 coupons they give you are just on orders over $100 that they put in small tech. There was another link in one of these groups that said I could get seven free items and I picked out 10 really amazing items on here and I only had to pay for the last three items, which was around $40. Also the insanity of claiming these items are way more expensive than they really are on Timu's website. It's just egregious. It makes you feel like you're getting a great discount and a great deal, but you're really spending money that you otherwise wouldn't have because you got sucked in with the seven free items and now you're spending 40 bucks. So these Facebook groups are built solely around accepting invites to get discounts. They even do trades for Shein gifts too, because it seems like they have some sort of game as well. I'm not sure how that one works because that is a huge rabbit hole for an entirely different video. It feels like Facebook emerged during this Wild West era of the internet. Then it buttoned up early on in its career as a social media and quickly devolved back into the Wild West of the internet here. You have to engage your ancient internet instincts while you're on Facebook because there's a scam at every corner. Anyway, thanks for tuning into this episode of me eventually finding a scam in everything I look into. I feel like a scam magnet. I suppose this isn't exactly what is the traditional sense of the word scam, but it sure is scummy tactics tactics to get people to spend more money. But I mean, that's everything. Like casinos and stuff like it. Everything is shit. I am usually a positive person and try to find the positive in most things, but man, this sucks. And I, I really wrote, this sucks. And then I turned off my computer and went to bed. <laughs> I did not write a positive outro at all. Anyway, send this to a parent who loves to click on phishing links and uh, make sure that they don't. <laughs> Alright, that's it. Bye!